Welcome back to Hearthstone Grand Masters. It's our winner's bracket match now for Asia Pacific. It is uh, once again our third week of Swiss here out of a total eight-week season. And uh, at the end of this week, we are going to be finding out which of our group of 16 players are in Division A for the top half in terms of best performing players and Division B for the uh, least well-performing players, the bottom half, uh, which means for the next four weeks when we go through the round robin, Division A, will be more likely to get to the World Championship at the end and less likely to be relegated. Whereas the players in Division B are in with a decent chance of sadly being relegated out of Grand Masters. So lots to play for in this final week of Swiss, especially for the players who may not have been performing all too well. Uh, I think it's fair to say that thankfully Tom60229 and Chonsu as our two players in the winner's bracket match, have been uh, performing pretty well so far, it's got to be said, in the first three weeks. Yes, uh, Rivius and Glory, maybe not so much, but definitely in with a strong shot of remaining within Division A as of the standings are uh, right now. For the players we'll be seeing tomorrow, the story is a little bit different, especially for the likes of Alan. But mm -hmm. of course, Bank Yugi will be playing tomorrow, and he, I think, is all but locked for Division A. It's hard yeah. to talk in absolutes this early on but because we only had three weeks it's so much to be gained from a single win which bank yugi was the champion last week that's right some uh, of the two players weeks ago rather uh yes correct in our first week of swiss and uh, we, we've had players who have been performing not all too well saying uh you know they have to do well this week alan one of our newcomers tweeting i think he needs to be runner up to even have a chance uh, of getting through to Division A, and we'll be seeing him play tomorrow. I expect great things from him, of course. What? But right now, we are going back. with our first match of the winner's bracket match. The winner here will be going through to our semi-finals on Sunday. And once again, this is specialist. So what you see is what you get for these players in terms of the decks. And what Chonsu sees is very, very tasty. It is a winning hand, is what this looks like. The Pharaoh Cat can come down. No Flame Imp in sight for Tom, so Chansu doesn't yeah. necessarily even have to use the Backstab. And Tom, I doubt, will be very um, likely to go for uh, Guardian Og Merchant just to deal with this Pharaoh Cat. We've seen Tom prioritize um, getting down the taps as soon as possible. However, the Cult Neophyte coming down on Curb does thing make things a little bit Delayed Just a little. Oh, it's, it's tough here, right? Because with double Shadow Step in hand, you really want the cat in hand, right? You want it to be able to go yeah. for double Shadow Step, more value with the Edwin next turn. So is there ever a consideration there for just Shadow Stepping the cat instead of equipping the dagger? I really thought he would. I'm surprised by that. Given uh, from Chansu's perspective, of course, he was thinking, oh, Tom's not going to trade a 3-1 into a 1-1. One, one. That looks pretty bad. But in this case, exactly, of the Guardian Og Merchant. Could have been a disaster. However, Chansu has picked up another 1. I mean, I think that's just the play. You lose the battle cry effect on Blackjack Stunner. But what would this Edwin even be? It's like a 12-12? 14-14? I can't even count that high, Gia. Basically, the point is, <laughs> this is a one game for Chansu. So far, yeah, it definitely seems that way. <laughs> There's a slight consideration of holding on to the very last stunner activation because okay. he could have stepped this, then held it in hand for dirty trick stunner. Instead, he's holding back Shadow Step instead to have the body on board, and he knows that the 1 2 is unlikely to die anyway, and so he could secret anyway. Right. Not that he even needs that because he just has a dang 12 12. Yep. Uh, I, I'm perfectly fine with this from Chonsu. 12-12 is already completely unreachable heights for Tom. Even with the broom in hand, even if he could go giant broom, it's still not enough uh, to clear off the Edwin quite yet here. So I think this is a perfectly reasonable uh, play here for Chonsu. And uh, given that this game is all but over already for Chonsu, I, I think it's kind of worth talking about the list for Tom. Because the only other player that I've notably seen bringing Zoo this week is Viper. And in his deck, he has one Brittlebone Destroyer. And I'd have to imagine the primary reason that one of in your deck is literally just to deal with Edwins and Quest. I would have to agree. Um, with Specialist, of course, there is room to put in text. It seems that Tom's text, however, the 
list with the Swamp Ooze, I have to imagine, is for weapon-based decks. Yeah. And the Living Dragon Breath is in there to deal with Mage. But that one might be the weirdest list because I would think that there's very little Freeze Mage in the meta. Or Tempo Mage is, of course, but um, I'm yeah. not sure if it's threatening enough that you would dedicate a whole deck. Yeah, I would have thought more that he'd go for like an anti priest list, but having said that, based on the testing, the deck itself is an anti priest deck. It just seems to dominate the priest overall. So I think Tom was probably just thinking there's nothing that you'd rather tech against, so you may as well put that in there. What I think he could have done is maybe put some kind of an answer to Edwin, because I, I feel like th the deck overall, when played over a large sample size, it's it's valid to say this deck loses to a big Edwin, especially when you're playing on ladder, where you're not going to see that many rogues overall. You can just say, right, that's the percentage where we lose. It's fine. That happens. I don't want to weaken my deck overall by putting in Silence or Brittlebone. Uh, but in a specialist tournament, where I think it's reasonable to expect a fair amount of rogue, uh, I do like the idea that Viper's gone for of cutting the Nefeset Thrashers, which feel a little bit clunky. They damage you a little bit too much without having the immediate benefit of being able to be played on the Dark Glare turn, and instead going for that little bit of extra removal with the Brittle Bone, which uh, maybe, who knows, could have dug Tom out of that pretty dire circumstance. Definitely a worthy consideration, and one that I doubt completely slipped Tom's mind. I feel right. that uh, his mindset is probably closer to he just thinks that Zoo is favored against Rogue overall. Maybe he doesn't think this matchup is as close as what in was indicated by our small mm. sample size testing. Uh, it was also worth noting that if Chansu didn't pick up the one drop there on time, that Edwin was a lot, lot smaller. And That's true. it's not very often that they end up with that type of double shadow step Edwin and Coin Hand. Well, uh, interesting starting mulligan for Tom. I, I like the three cards he did kept. I will say, I was looking at holding on to the giant with that hand, with uh, Raise Dead and Flame Imp being able to res it back, get more self-damaging effects. Uh, it's, it's definitely arguable that I'm not focusing on the powerful part of the deck enough, but that could have very easily been uh, a four or five mana 8-8 eight, eight right at the start of the game. Interesting. I've never kept a flush giant in my life, despite me actually thinking it's kind of cute. <laughs> Um, I, I don't know. I feel like Flesh Giant, by the time you get activated down to four or th four or five, did you say? I feel like it takes a little bit more activations okay. than um, four or five mana for it to be hugely impactful oh, against Rogue. Yeah. At the four or five mana slot, I think it still gets straight up punished by the Blackjack Center. Whereas if it's even cheaper, it can just be essentially... Um, more mana spent to remove for the rogue than it is mana spent to be played for the zoo. I can see that. Uh, Chonsu now approaching that situation that you kind of ran into, I think it's fair to say, a fair bit yep. in the practice games where you just run out of stuff. Uh, and so I think it's of the highest priority to step this wand thief here and find anything to spend your mana on for the next few turns. Yeah, this was definitely a mistake I was making a lot from the rogue perspective of just hoping that something sticks and then shadow stepping it, but Chonsu realizes that this stuff is getting traded down. The seasoned Zoo players will absolutely trade where they can and just maintain the widest board because that's the type of state that Rogue has the toughest time dealing with, especially if things are damaged and get can't get backstabbed. Going for the one step on the one thief, I think, is reasonable. You could still save the second step for one other thing, and he has picked up a way to spend his mana, at least for the next turn. Yeah, and I think it was actually reasonable in this instance to assume it would survive uh, just because of the trade having to come in on the 3-2 instead. And while Chonsu is happy with finding an Edwin undeniably here, it's not quite there with the uh, effect again of the Neophyte stopping this right in its tracks. He could go just step replay Edwin. You end up with a 6-6 and a mm -hmm. mage spell, but... I feel like he has to go for something bigger. We could see just step this turn or something like step Frostbolt and then he could go Arcane Breath, One Thief, potentially another cheap spell and Edwin, but that would still be One Thief getting a one cost spell. So... Uh, well, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's actually just gonna be spend all his mana anyway and... It's still, again, reasonable to assume the one thief will survive because he's not trading it. 
I like this. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's reasonable for sure. But things I think on average will start to go very, very wrong for him now. A flame him if found here for Tom six zero two two nine, which it has a decent chance of doing, would be huge. But he misses out on the uh, the one out of three there, or the two out of three, I should say, uh, to get the flame imp back, which is pretty terrible. It's got to be said in terms of his development. The Guardian Og Merchant is nothing to sniff at, though, because if it's Tom true. feels like this one thief is, or or Chansu's banking on this one thief surviving, then he could just get rid of it, and Tom's next turn, uh, Chansu's next turn is awful. But obviously, coining out the Guardian Og Merchant feels bad because Tom's next turn wants to be Disease Vulture Coin Tap or something along exactly. those lines. And so he leaves it up. It's reasonable to assume, I think, given that he's seen one Shadow Step, that leaving this one thief on the board is really not that bad, but potentially this may be the one glimmer of hope that Chonsu needed to try and pull this game back. It is just kind of a glimmer because the Edwin is not of an insurmountable size this time. Uh-huh. I mean, if he'd got Ray of Frost there, then we'd be looking at a nice big juicy Edwin, but... Oh, indeed. Not quite. Was this ever a Pexis Blast for next turn to deal oh. with a Disease Vulture? It just feels terrible, but so do the other two. So yeah, they all feel much. absolutely awful. Probably. I, I think so. Like, the Arcane Explosion on average is just not good enough, really, with no spell damage in the deck. One damage AoE, I, I, I think, is just too lackluster. Not the type of zoo that plays a bunch of imps anymore. They yes. go for the mid-range plays. So he's going to go for Plagiarize Edwin instead of Frostbook because he still hasn't seen the coin. I think that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. So it's a little scary. You know, there's not the ability for the Edwin to die on board, but there's the ability for a lot of damage uh, to come through over the next few turns, especially if you factor in second Vulture. Oh, pickup of Tour Guide also means mm -hmm. Tom can spend coin on the Og Merchant instead if he so chooses. Alarm Yikes! <laughs> I haven't seen that card in ages. Yeah, that's not the one you're looking for. And I guess also fairly importantly, it means the plagiarize doesn't get the coin. It's not like the biggest deal uh, in this instance, it's got to be said. But it's, uh, I'd imagine, like a slightly less good card going to Chonsu. Indeed. Well, Chansu can get this Vulture activation yep. for himself and fit in the tour guide if he values a 1-1 on board. Hmm. Honestly, I'm looking at a face game plan now. I was Edwin considering connects that. Face. He has a Pexus Frostbolt, which is technically a damage burst next turn. It's a little bit uh, short, but I mean... He's losing. Trading certainly doesn't get there. Right. Something needs to go pretty miraculously for Chansu, I think, to have a chance. Uh -huh. It starts by seeing what the three drop is. Yeah. I, I like that he's going face. Dealing with one vulture just seems completely lackluster because there's another one. And as it is, Tom's already dealing with board space issues. Well, this is undeniably the, uh, the mop-up turn here for Tom and... He uh, is actually falling a little bit short here. It's got to be said, even with a Guardian Orc Merchant ready to come down, Chonsu, I think, is likely to be able to connect a little bit more damage to face. Yeah, more than a little, I would say. Whoa. And yeah, the trades for Tom are not clean here. They're going to have to go into the Edwin. Mm -hmm. But he will still end up with tons of development just because of the nature of these vultures and the fact that he picked up the injured Blade Master. So again, I think we're ending up in that spot similar to where Rivius was last time, uh, facing Tom, where he'll have a bunch of burst, but with no board, the zoo can actually race them. And Chansu would be looking at more one thief discoveries or say miscreant and uh Cobalt Lack. Extra healing though is uh, a big deal because now Trey, 8 damage, 11. I'm looking at lethal on this board. Oh, yeah. Wait, I didn't realize that the other vulture would end up sticking. Right. Apexis Blast face, Frostbolt face. 
takes eight damage, plus four uh -huh. on board. Backstab dagger takes out the taunt. That's just game. How did this happen? Whoa. Wait, wait, I need to rewind. Where, was there a way Tom could have cleared both of the vultures? I guess not. It seemed like he used almost all of his cards. I don't think so. Like he could have prioritized board and not got the taunt down by playing the Guardian Orc Merchant, but that would obviously have meant tanking even more damage. Uh, over the course of that game. And it's, I think, reasonable to assume that your opponent is unlikely to have eight extra points of damage in hand that they got off both the activations of the uh, Wand Thief. But in the end, I mean, what a game from Chonsu there to be our victor and head through to the semifinals, first of all, on Sunday. Like you said, spotting that face line uh, was just a stroke of genius. I think a lot of players would have tried to mop up there and stick the board, but you and Chonsu both pure aggro degenerates, and uh, <laughs> I applaud you for it. You were going to suggest that line too, Derek. Join the degenerate side. Uh, yeah, you got me there. I was also going to be saying going face, but I had less reasoning behind it. I just wanted to stop thinking at that point and get some attacks to face. Okay, you're actively arguing that you are stupid, so I'll let you dig that own hole. <laughs> um, yeah, that, I have to say, at the end there, my head, I had just deleted the other um, vulture from my head because I assumed that all right. the trades would be happening, but you bring up a great point that Tom, from his perspective, no way you'd be expecting eight burst from hand. Yes, it's two mage spells, but in the pool of mage spells, there's not that many that can actually go face um, yeah. and deal that damage. So um, originally, talking about a Texas Blast to deal with a Vulture, but it can just be inable burst damage. So just like that, we are already sending Chonsu through to Sunday. We are indeed. Tom is going to have to be a roughing it out in the decider match with his Zoo deck, which looked very dominant in the first series of the day, up against Rivius's Rogue, but very uh, lackluster, it's got to be said, up against Chomsu's Rogue as the second match of the day, mainly uh, at the expense of uh, Edwin, it's got to be said, coming down a couple of times and making for some swift victories uh, for Chomsu. Even though he mulliganed it away on the play in that second game there, which I think is the one thing that was maybe worth talking about a bit more heavily in his game plan. But in the end, Edwin was able to get the work done after a very well-played game. Uh, but before we head into our decider match, which I was talking about, we first got to get our way through the uh, elimination match with our two players who lost their first match of the day in Rivius up against Glory. And uh, it's got to be said, for Glory, if things didn't work out for him in the first series of the day up against uh, Chonsu on the Rogue, it's, uh, I imagine, going to have to be history repeating itself here most of the time, given that Glory on the Malagos Druid once again has to try and take down a rogue. Yeah, I think we're up to see very, very similar matchups in the future. But we did see some genius from Glory with the uh, Geppetto Joybuzz early Alex Jogless mm. Lethal. That is something that you don't always account for as rogue. It does seem like the stars have to align for Druid, though, because not only do you have to hit the early ramp, the rogue has to hit the Edwin soon enough. Yeah. But I've seen some pretty crazy things happen with early Guardian animals as well. So definitely chances for victory on either side. That's right. It's still the, the core of the deck of all druids is the same at the moment, it feels like. You've got the 